welcome to the No Flipping Excuses Show. Don't judge that This is the number one podcast for real estate investing, and each episode covers what you need to know to find and flip deals right now. Break free of the chains that are holding you back and join us on today's episode. Hey, what's going on? It's Jason Lucchese, and welcome to the No Flipping Excuses Show. I am so excited that you are here with us today. We are episode 102, and this is going to be a really awesome episode. It's about getting leads, standing out, doing things that not everyone is doing. It's disrupting what everybody else is doing so that you can be zagging when everybody else is zigging because that's what you need to do, especially from a marketing standpoint. All of us want to consider ourselves investors and all this other stuff. At the end of the day, yeah, you own a business, but you have to be an expert at marketing, or at least you have to be stumbling a little bit in the beginning, uh, make some failures, make some mistakes, and get yourself up to that level to where you're marketing and you're not just being this salesperson. Because at the end of the day, yeah, there's sales, but if you market things the right way, you're gonna have a a really solid lead flow coming in. And with what we're doing right now with the tax uh, delinquent properties, we're marketing these people in a way that they're calling us and they're giving us all of the information that we need. Uh, And that's huge. So if you wanna learn more about that, join us in our free Facebook group. It's called Wholesaling Houses Virtually. And that brings us into our guest that's on here. Everything that we're going to be talking about today is how to grab leads virtually using Facebook. And I've got my good friend that I've known for uh, a long time now, probably since 2013, Mr. Nate Kennedy. Nate, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing amazing, man. Thanks for having me on. I'm pretty excited. Uh, Don't make many podcast appearances. So this is uh, is new for me. So hopefully (laughs) we're going to expect some ums and ahs out of me today. But yeah, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to be able to spread the good word of uh, the marketing stuff that people can be leveraging to take advantage of in their marketplace and help your audience kind of maybe move into a new realm. Be awesome. Let's do it. Yeah, man, absolutely. And for folks that don't know uh, that much about you, why don't you talk about a little about how, how long you've been in the business, what made you get started? Um, oh, you yeah. know, some of those good things uh, <laughs> we all like to talk about. We like we like talking about ourselves, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the hard part. I try to, you know, people tell me I need to talk more by myself. But yeah, <laughs> I'd say, you know, I got started in the in the industry in 2002. I started in the mortgage arena. And then from there, I started, was in that, working with someone else in the mortgage space, worked for another company. And then I went off and did my own thing, created my own mortgage company. And then I met a company. Uh, a guy who helped me flip my first house back in 2005 and three years of getting into the real estate space. And it was pretty, got kind of the bug at that point, right? Cause I bought a property and we did over a hundred thousand dollars on our first deal. So I don't know that nice. that normally does not happen. Uh, but it did happen because I had a guy in my corner that was mentoring me and helping me. Right. And then what happened from there is I just obviously started doing more real estate stuff, doing more mortgage stuff. Then, you know, rise and falls of, of different moments throughout time. And then I ended up starting an agency. I started getting into internet marketing and information marketing and started an agency and that's what we do now. So over all that time I've built and sold companies. I've had info products. I'm now in the space of, you know, we've evolved over time from just an agency from selling our own products to actually helping other people sell their products. And then also helping businesses generate leads for their company. So yeah, we've really dialed in the last few years with just being focused on the real estate preneur niche, the real estate investor niche. And since that's my expertise on many different fronts and yeah, so that's why that's, that's a little bit about me, man. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. And for, for folks out there that don't understand, like, Right now, we're we're in that digital age of, of 2019, and the technology has caught up quite a bit, you know, since Nate and I got started into the business. I got started in 08. He got started a little bit earlier uh, than me, but we've come a long way uh, since, you know, when I started in 08. Like, things were just kind of, you know, I don't even think YouTube, YouTube might have been there. Um, I know Facebook just started allowing it to kind of, you know, allow people from the public to come out because it was started off obviously just like small colleges and then it kind of grew from there. Uh, But LinkedIn was just, 
you know, that was brand new. Uh, it's nowhere near where it is today. And I always tell people, I'm like, you could literally do this business from anywhere in the world. And the beautiful thing is it's true. Like I remember two years ago, uh, my wife and I were in Bora Bora for our uh, 10 year anniversary. And I was on a, uh, literally, I was on a hut on the ocean and we had a Wi-Fi signal and I was able to, to do some stuff on my laptop. It's just phenomenal what you're able to do as long as you've got like an, a connection uh, to the internet. <laughs> and, you know, that's why I wanted to have you come on here today is because people, you know, are having difficulties with doing direct mail, uh, voicemail drops, text messages, uh, just being able to reach their avatar, their target audience. And you really figured out a way to do this on Facebook with Facebook ads. And some people might be like, oh, well, I, I don't know how to do that. Let, let me just ask you a quick question about it, and then we'll dive into some stuff. How difficult is it for somebody to, to really kind of launch their first campaign on Facebook without any experience? Is it, is it difficult? There's, there's definitely resources that will help you. The only d difficult part about it is the unknown, right? Because everyone is, when you get into something new, you got to point and click and not be afraid to mess it up and not be afraid right. of making a mistake. I always tell people, don't be scared. Just don't hit delete. Right. <laughs> right. So if, 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 if you're in question, don't hit the delete button. So, you know, I think it's the unknown. I, but once you get familiarized with the system, like any new system, like the first time you sent out a direct mail piece, there was an unknown. Right. Yeah, yeah. You didn't absolutely. know, well, what list do I buy? What person do I call? What direct mail piece do I send, right? So there's right. always unknowns in any new marketing, you know, medium. So I think that's the biggest thing. But if you're willing to be frustrated for a little bit and as you figure it out and understand how the pieces work, then no, it's 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 not hard. But if you quit easy and as soon as something gets hard and you're like it kind of frustrates you and you don't want to do it, then yeah, it probably would be. But just got to right. fight. There's all kinds of tutorials out there can help you kind of get the basics of how their system works, you know? Right. And, you know, the thing is, over the years, when, when we've just done small little things, we've never done it at the scale that you've done it at. Obviously, you've done it for large, uh, you know, large individuals and businesses over the years. But overall, their, their back end interface with their ads, it's changed, obviously. But, um, it, as long as you're doing it consistently, you'll be able to understand like their back end because it's really not that challenging. Like you said, just kind of go through the motions and take action. And there, there is a ton of tutorials out there. So with that being said, when it comes to, to making the Facebook ads, like where, where does somebody start? Like how, how do they get like started with, you know, doing Facebook ads in their market? Yeah. So, I mean, step, I mean, we can get technical and, and definitely dive into that. And I think before we, I'll do that, then I'll talk about the value and kind of how you should approach it sure. like more of a strategy side. But, you know, technically, you know, you really, you got everyone, I got this kind of the, this simple version, people get a little confused and they think, Hey, my profile is my Facebook ad. That's just you posting on on Facebook. So you got to set up a business manager with Facebook and set up a ad account and set up a fan page. And then all your yeah. ads are run off your fan page. And so what I want to, you know, what I'd like people to take away from this podcast is start thinking of your marketing as a campaign. Start thinking of the bigger realm of marketing. Don't look at everything as just a, uh, as just Facebook ads, just direct mail, just RVMs, you know, start looking at this stuff as a campaign and how can it all work within a within your business model. So, but with Facebook ads, the core things you need right out of the gate, you got to have, you're going to want a website, you're going to want a fan page and a business account. You have those three things, get it all integrated and you're off to the races. You create an ad and you can go from there. So, and, okay. and get, you know, get leads coming in. I think where it, a lot of people kind of, we might tell you, you don't need a website, but I can tell you right now the conversions on websites and the, the quality of leads you get if you're running ads on the social media platforms, the website's going to give you a better quality lead. Okay. And, you know, you and I have talked about this offline because for folks that don't know, Mike and I um, are actually part of Nate's uh, group on, on Facebook. And 
we signed up for his stuff uh, a little bit ago and we're still kind of going through it. Uh, we just have some other things going on. But the the thing that, you know, I wanted to to mention there is, you know, we're we're doing this and uh, the, the website stuff that we've encountered is Carrot is a, is a great uh, resource. So we're both really good friends with Ch- Trevor Mock. Uh, and he's got a service and you could plug and play. You don't have to be a website developer or anything like that or a designer. You could just go there, get your stuff. And if you need to get logos or anything made, I would always recommend just go to Fiverr. If you want something uh, super simple and easy, uh, you could get done for five, ten bucks uh, pr- pretty easy from there. And uh, making a, a business page is not hard at all. Uh, Facebook actually has steps that you go through when setting it up and you just kind of go from there. Is there... Do you recommend Nate, like when they're picking out like a business, like uh, like for their business page? Do you recommend is there a special name that they need to do for like uh, to make it specific for them, like a uh, Jason buys Indiana houses, or uh, is there anything in particular? That's always a question we get, and there's two schools of thought, and you got to just pick what one you like. You know, there's for example. We have one of our clients, Wealth Builder Properties, right? So they're buying and okay. selling. Then you've got, you've also got the, we've got another guy that's uh, Greg Buys Houses, you know? Okay. So there's a couple different avenues about it. And I, I, if I were to have, if bring someone on, they came to me and said, hey, let's set this up. I would look for something that's a little bit more brand based. I think, you know, the, the, Jason buys houses or Greg buys houses. Those are good. You're going to get leads from those, right? And it tells people exactly what it is. But if you're building a company, you're building a local presence. Like for example, another one of our clients has prime, uh, prime properties. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it it kind of functions as both and you only got one to manage, right? As opposed to uh, if you have a buyer side and a seller side. And I think nowadays people understand that you position yourself as a professional brand that's going in the marketplace to help the community, you know? is is kind of what i, I like what i that. recommend but i do think with what's important is carrot like you mentioned we recommend that to everybody just because trevor's done an amazing job of just creating a solution for investors and agents for that yep. matter to that takes all the tech confusion out of life so <laughs> yes. when you talked about Absolutely. being around a long time ago i'll never forget the um uh, I had to find a guy who know who knew how to code html and mobile wasn't even a thing back then so i was lucky but HTML, <laughs> yeah. I, I went back and looked at it because I was researching my emails and I'm like, I can't believe it. I pulled it up on my computer. Some of these old sites is crazy. So, <laughs> I know. I know some of our old sites too. Yeah, they definitely aren't mobile friendly. Um, no, that's awesome, man. So yeah, for folks out there, you could go to Carrot, check it out uh, and, and get it. Uh, get it if uh, this is a strategy that you want to implement. Because uh, this, I really like the Facebook ads ads part as long as you do it the right way. And let's kind of talk about that, right? Uh, doing things the right way on Facebook. Um, there's there's obviously a, an approach that you have to have to this. You can't just go out there and target, you know, everybody in a city. So what what kind of things do you look for? Because I know you have ser- you have several people doing this, uh, and you have plenty of case studies and probably a lot of data that supports you know certain ad set like ad segments and you know, different types of uh, audiences uh, to contact. So what are we as investors, if we're implementing this Facebook strategy, what are we wanting to, to use? What are we wanting to target? Yeah, so we do two different pieces here. So really you want to kind of, Facebook's made some changes recently due to, what is it, uh, Cambridge Analytical fallout. So oh, gotcha. they've, they've made some changes. So you had now or in as a real estate investor, you're considered special category. No big deal. You just say your special category. But some of the fine tuned targeting is has been removed. And we've known this is coming down the pipeline for a while. So that's where it's some of the strategy shifts. So you want to target your area. And I think it's the more the way you want to do it. You want to do video campaigns. Okay. So and the reason that we like video campaigns is and I talked earlier, I mentioned earlier about building a brand in the community. So there's a lot of big companies that are coming around that are funded by billions of dollars that are looking to come into your marketplace and they're buying properties. Zillow's already in your marketplace, right? So OfferPad, you know, you've got other bigger companies just like that that are buying up deals. So they're just kind of pushing out offers. Whereas 
with you, they've got massive amounts of money they spend on marketing, but you can actually compete with those guys by leveraging video marketing because there's something that's very important that Facebook allows you to do. If you watch, so if you're watching this video on Facebook, obviously, you know, Jason, you can retarget that person, right? So Facebook yep. says, hey, this person watched this video for all five minutes, this entire five minute video. So now you do you want to show them a new ad? Facebook basically asked that to you, right? The way that you can set it up. And now you can show them another ad of a client you helped. You can show them an ad of, hey, we're looking to buy some more properties in this marketplace. Are you looking to sell, right? So you want to run video based ads to build audiences and let people know about you and find out you exist. If you're cringing yep. because you think you got to do a video, don't worry about it. <laughs> if you got an iPhone, if you got, or one of those other things that are out there that, that are phones, but, uh, <laughs> so, uh, you can, you can obviously record anything right with that in front of a house you're working on any kind of video you want talking to the sellers. And then those are the, you don't need to be high tech. You don't need to go get a video crew. Your first video is going to suck. Right. But yeah. it's okay. You know, you're not the first, I just did a quick live. All been there. I, I just did a quick uh, live in the group and i started like i completely forgot my train of thought in the middle of the live and then uh you know it happens but we're all normal that's one thing that we all we all used to have this do you remember um oh, the uh the, the flip the little flip, flip, flip cam oh here it is <laughs> <laughs> nice. i still have it <laughs> that's so, that's what i used to record all my videos on when i was first getting started that's before the they, they came out with selfie sticks and all the other things. I literally took it and I couldn't see myself, so I had to hold it. So I had no idea if I was in the frame or not. So it was just <laughs> funny, funny times. We've come a, a long ways uh, since the flip cam. <laughs> that's true. Oh, that's hilarious, man. You got to hold that. Oh, yeah. This videos. Is now, when you do videos, you should have the flip cam just there. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you see where the lens is. Yeah. And then the video part, I'd have to hold it this way and I would talk into it. So I was hoping every time I would do a video that I would be actually in the video or half of my face would be off or something like that. It was, that that's, it was, so that was the that was the high tech one. Dude. That was the thin model. That wasn't even the original flip cam. It was the it was the HD model. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Oh, um, man. Yeah. So I think, you know, you want to run some video campaigns to build audiences. The goal of that is for you to build audiences and people to know you. And I'll tell you how it's going to benefit you going forward. And then obviously other ads like you see out there as well. But here's what building audiences and putting back. I call it it's the bank of goodwill. Right. And you don't have to be always be selling in these content pieces. You do. You can always just be providing value to the community on how you can help them. Or, hey, if you're struggling with this scenario, here's something you can do. Or, hey, here's a property. Here's the seller that, that we helped, and here's how we helped them, right? So it's, it lets people know that you do real estate. It lets people know that you're there to help them, and you're not going to get bashed as much from some of the keyboard raiders out there. They're going to comment on your ads and say, hey, <laughs> you're, a, you're a scam artist. You're going to buy low and sell high. I'm like, I haven't even given you an offer. How do you know what I'm going to buy at, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, I was going to get those people, but this helps reduce that, and then also – you know, provides, puts value into the marketplace. So people start recognizing you. And the reason behind, what's kind of cool about that is one of our, one of our clients, Kyle, he has a, uh, he's picked up three deals from it so far, but I'll talk about the two of them. One of them was an actual agent in the marketplace who called him and said, Hey, can I, I got a deal. I think you might be able to help me with the agent. Couldn't help get it done. They needed his help is some unique process. So he came in, Helped the agent out, closed the deal, and did a 30K profit on the deal. Jeez, nice. And then he did an, and he was like, How'd you find me? She goes, I saw your video on Facebook. Right? Nice. And then that happened twice. And the next deal actually ended up being like a friend of the family that saw his video in his marketplace and didn't know he did it and called him up and he closed the deal with them. And that was a 40K deal. Jeez. And then the funny part is he's walking through Home Depot. It gets better, man. He's walking through Home Depot. And the manager at Home Depot came up to him and was like, hey, I've seen your content on Facebook. I've seen your videos on Facebook. How can we earn your business? Because they know he's doing oh, rehabs. Nice. So nice. now he's got these people that are looking at him saying, hey, how can I? He's now reducing his cost on his rehab. So his profit's getting better, right? Jeez, so, that's awesome. That's really know, there's, cool. There's because power behind it. 
Well, what what the whole thing is too, and what what you were you spoke about just a, a tiny amount, but a lot of people need to understand this is you're building a brand, um, and, and it's really big. Like we have no flipping excuses. Uh, that's the brand that we're gonna stick with and ride with because uh, we really like it. And you know, you brought up some other companies of your clients, and I, I think that's the best, in my opinion. I believe that's the best way to go because anybody can say Jason buys houses or. Nate buys houses. Anybody can say that as long as they obviously have that name or if they're if they really like Jason or the name Nate, they could do that. But I think building a brand is is really huge. What What's your take on that? Because is that going to be a pretty instrumental part here with with having the, the proper audience? Yeah, I think so. I'm a firm believer of it. And I think we're playing the long game, not the short game. And I think yeah. so many investors have been trained through a lot of different people like to play the short game and be transactional based. Yeah. Not be long term based. And I think if you're playing the long game, you're going to build a brand. Now, here's the thing. You're the face of the brand. You're still going to be you. Right. You're so even if you did Jason's buy houses, you can still do. You, you can. And now if you're doing obviously no flipping excuses, but Jason's the face of that. Right. You know, like you guys and any investor like Tom is the face to prime, you know, prime properties. So it's there is you're still the one on the video. There's still no liking and trusting you as you give value. But the brand is a little bit different because it's more professional. And down the road, you might want to step out of the video part four years from now and have somebody that you've that's come up in the company and they're a partner or they've earned the ability to they're, you know, they're putting the content together, right? And you're becoming you're going from president to CEO per yeah. se, right? So yep. brand can do that. But if it's Brian on Greg buys houses, it gets a little weird, right? <laughs> yeah so. absolutely absolutely man so so let me there's obviously people could go get spokesperson pe- uh, videos done on fiverr um do you recommend like just get yourself uncomfortable do the videos yourself and you know you're gonna screw up you're gonna make mistakes and that's fine but would you recommend that they go through those hurdles go through those roadblocks make their own videos with them or Maybe they do a do spokesperson it. video. You got to do it. You got to do the video. That's what I thought. You know, okay. be be the person. Like at the end of the day, especially if this is in a marketplace that if I know virtual investing, you invest anywhere, right? So let's kind of cover that topic. You don't have to be in front of a house to do it, but you can still, if you're the face of the company, still create content videos, still do testimonial videos with the seller that you help, just like we're doing this with GoTo right. Webinar or Zoom, right? The tools are there to, to yeah. virtually do it as well. But I think if you're ver- investing in that marketplace and you're, if your name's on the direct mail, you're sending out or your name's on the RVM and you know, be the, be the person, be the guy, be the woman. Yeah. Right. So, yep. and then, you know, you can do it virtually, you can create the content and then you can set up your ads and people still get to know, like, and, and trust you because they see your ads. They don't hundred percent always know that you live there if you're doing it virtually. But if you live in the market, right. you're doing deals, you're going to run into the scenarios like Kyle ran into over time. So, no, that's, that's pretty cool, man. That's pretty cool. I, I really like it. And one, one last, you know, topic that we can cover here before we dive into, uh, wrapping things up is say for instance, somebody's looking for, for that right type of audience. Um, you know, so are you saying like, do, do some video ads and build your, uh, start building your, I guess, retargeting audience from there or What's like the first step for finding like the audience? Like we're probably not going to want to target people like 18 to maybe 24 because that, that's probably not going to be an age where most people are maybe buying or selling homes. Maybe there is, but it's a very low percentage. So how do we find out like the ages of the people? And because I know there's certain things to where you could obviously filter if somebody owns a home, if they're college graduate. Um, you could also, I'm not sure if this is anymore, but can you still do it by income? Can you see how much they're making? And no. Okay. So that's, that was something yeah. that was available just not too long ago. Uh, and yeah, it's gone now. They've, yeah. They got rid of a lot of stuff. Uh, just recently they've been rolling it out like over the last month or so. And, uh, so, you know, you can definitely target by age cause that makes sense. Right. An 18 year old chance of them having, you know, a house ready to sell right now or whatever is slim. But, right. you know, you can definitely do age. We actually tend to stick to city and radius or county. Sweet. And then okay. we want to show people all in that county in that area, right? Because, you know, someone in, there might be somebody on one side of the county that has a 
that lives over there, but they have on the other in the middle of the county, they have a house that they want to get rid of that, you know, maybe, right. you know, they got it for mom and they don't want it anymore. So, you know, and you wouldn't reach that person technically if you got too limited on that. So we like to actually screen people and we like to pre-qualify people with ad copy. So the video content, if it's directed towards a seller, it's obviously going, if they engage and watch that video, it's going to be someone who likely potentially is a seller. Now we also have on the ad copy for conversions to get a, you know, someone to fill out our form on the website. We, you know, we pre-screen, Hey, are you looking to sell your house? Right. If you are, we can make it a, you know, give you a fair offer, you know, no rehab needed type stuff, right? Those types of ads. So we're we're using the ad to do the heavy lifting to screen the person up front. And you know, the, the thing too is after you've done some research, correct me if I'm wrong here, Nate, but wouldn't it make sense to target your radius or maybe like a zip code and then expand from the radius from there? Like if I want to target a certain zip code, I could, you know, go up to maybe 25, 50 miles from that zip code as an example, obviously I wouldn't go that far, but yeah. let's just say I'm wanting to target that area. That's going to be an area as me, as an investor, I'm coming in there, especially if I'm going to do this as a wholesaling, I'm targeting the areas that my buyers are buying in, right? Like I'm not wanting to go outside of the norm and be like, Hey, Mr. Buyer, I got something for you, but it's completely out of what you told me your scope was. I I'm wanting to target the the zip codes and the counties that they're wanting to invest in, right? Yeah. Yeah. You want to do that for sure. So the zip code side is, um, I don't, you, it's tough on just picking a zip code anymore. They're a little stricter on that, on that side, okay. but you can do city, but you can do a city mile radius and, uh, but you can do counties. You can, you can do mile radiuses. So you're not like, cause county, a mile radius on a county could be huge. Yeah. Right. So it doesn't yeah, have to be just use as an example, depending on how big marketplace you're in. But, you know, you could do the city in a 15 mile radius, 25 mile radius. So they don't allow five. I don't believe they allow five mile radius anymore, though. OK, so it's pretty tight. But you also yeah, want an audience, right? Up. Like audiences can get if you get too small and too suppressive with the information, it can affect your conversions. So what what would be ideal then? I guess I that that would be a last last question. <laughs> I would do city 50 mile. The city you want to invest in, I'd probably do the, the lowest mile radius you can do, which is 10 or 15 at the moment. Okay. Okay. So. And for the audience size, uh, you know, it depends, right? Because you're, you're wanting to get those homeowners. If I'm in Indianapolis, maybe it's, you know, 100,000 people uh, in, in the county that we're wanting to do. Would that be like ideal? Anything maybe above 25,000 as an audience? Would, would that be yeah, like ideal? So here's what, what's going to change. The size of the audience is really just going to change on how much you can spend. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. So if you got a big audience, then you like, if you're in New York, you're going to spend a lot more. If you're right. in a smaller, smaller market, you're not going to spend as much. So people always ask us like, Hey, how does, how much should I spend per, per day or how much should I spend? Kind of spending per month, I'm like, well, it just depends. It's anywhere from thirty dollars a day up to two hundred dollars a day, on depending on the size of the marketplace. Because right. Facebook, what will happen is your stuff will it's ad fatigue and it'll burn out, and you got to change it out. But you can overspend, and we learned that uh, years ago. We we're overspending for a client, and he he wanted to because he wanted to saturate the market with his stuff, so everybody knew him, and he yep. didn't want his competitors to have any space. <laughs> but we knew when we went from $200 a day, his lead cost was X. And then we knew when we went to five, $600 a day, his lead cost would also, it, it, the lead, the amount of leads we got on 200 versus 500 was very nominal. There was not much of a difference. And, but he didn't care because he just knew his, his, he was controlling the, the news feeds. Oh, okay. So, nice. You know, nice, so, but man. eventually you can, you can spend and there's no, there's a diminishing return. So, yeah. No, that's awesome, man. Cool. Well, let me ask you this as we're starting to, to wrap. Let me uh, get two book recommendations from you because we always like sharing recommendations from other entrepreneurs out there, either audio book, regular book. I, I'm a big audio guy, so uh, we like sharing what other successful people are you know, reading or maybe even watching. Um, so if you have anything, that would be great. So the book I recommend everybody is Go Giver but I probably not the first one to recommend that one on this episode on this show here. Uh, go giver. 
Uh, big fan of that book. I just read one called Vision. Oh, okay. and which was pretty cool. Really structuring like what's your vision for the company yeah. and getting very very clear on that and nice. letting that guide your decisions. Uh, Clockwork was another good one. I read a lot of business books, so yeah. No, that's awesome, man. So, I love business books. Love them. <laughs> and, I, and I like Especially, Audible because I do. That's oh yeah. I don't listen to Metallica or death metal when I'm working out. I listen to, uh, you know, audio audible. So. No, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm the same way. And, um, you know, we have five acres, so it takes about two and a half hours to mow and uh, I can normally knock out an audio book. Uh, so I love listening to audible books. Uh, they're, they're awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, that that's cool. So Nate, for, for folks that maybe want to reach out to you, find out more on how they can find out about how they can work out or, you know, work things out with you. Like if they want to do like some Facebook stuff or uh, maybe go through like what Mike and I are going through, um, anything like that, what would be the best way for them to, to reach you? Yeah, just go to the best way, NateKennedy.com, my, my site. That's the best way. You can also hit me okay. up on Instagram or Facebook. My handle on social media is Nate Kennedy MD. So you can find me there. And that's really uh Nate Kennedy MD as in a uh, marketing doctor. So let that, <laughs> let that, let that in. Nice. But nice. Uh, yeah, I mean, just send me up over there, send me a message, you know, happy to chat. I, I'm a big fan of conversations. I think we're in the new age slash old age of conversations. So <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, you know, that's separating, you know, businesses that are growing from others and ones that are willing to have the conversation. So yeah, reach out, let's chat. Awesome, man. Well, any parting words uh, for our listeners that are checking out the show and listening uh, yeah. and, and we're wrapping up? Do it. Because if you don't do it, someone's going to. So <laughs> it might yeah. as well be you. I mean, the, yeah. the market's changing. The way things are happening, the way the market space is changing, you got to be as more than a one trick pony, right? You got to have different avenues of marketing and bringing in deals. And all that stuff works together. So get involved and, and get it done and own your marketplace. If you don't, if you don't already get out there and own it. So you, you can compete long term. No, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. So, so guys, if you would like to find out more uh, about what Nate's doing, head on over to natekennedy.com and you could find out more, get involved with uh, the Facebook ads approach. It's something that we're adding to our tool bag. So make sure that you head on over there, natekennedy.com. Also too, if you need anything from Mike or myself, uh, just send us an email, support at jasonlucchese.com. That's S-U-P-P-O-R-T at J-A-S-O-N-L-U-C-C-H-E-S-I.com. And if you're watching this right now on YouTube, make sure you become a subscriber. You get notifications first when we get these videos uploaded for you. And also make sure you smash that like button and also leave us a comment. If you're listening to this on iTunes, make sure you become a subscriber. Leave us a five-star review, especially if you feel like we deserved it. If you give us anything lower, please let us know why you went lower than five because I would definitely be interested. But other than that, thanks so much for your time. Have a great day and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care.